and welcome to the show. We are here today on Forza Horizon 4, not quite with another team adventure. Ideally we would be, but we're playing around on Fortune Island because there's some tracks here that we don't really drive very often, so a little bit of, a little bit of change of scenery, can't speak. Uh, but yes, change of scenery. Unfortunately though, you can't do the team adventure game mode on Fortune Island for whatever reason, I don't understand it either. So instead we're just going to do a series of races, yeah, follow the kind of the same rules. Got to keep the same car throughout. Uh, for this particular one, this session, if you like, we are racing some B-Class cars from the United Kingdom. And I'm driving a car that I've not really driven before. I don't know whether this is going to work or not. It is a gamble, shall we say. I've got a Hill Nymph with a motorbike engine in it and all-wheel drive. My, my kind of thought was... Well, okay, my thought was motorbike engine, keep it rear-wheel drive because the engines at the back will give us good traction for off-road and make it quick, but the motorbike engine you can't actually do much in terms of upgrades with, so we had to go for all-wheel drive because otherwise the PI wasn't going to work and the turbo rally engine wasn't going to fit in B-Class with, with any tyres and stuff, so... Yeah, uh, I don't really know if this is going to quite work out. I've never had much luck with the Hillman. I think I've built it for something but it didn't really work, so yeah, we're going to see how this version works. Um, hopefully it'll be good, but no guarantee. The MG is quite fun. I thought about building an MGV, to be honest. Um, oh god, I got some lag, got lag, and then got murdered by big heavyweights. Um, not what we, not what we, not what you really want when you're in one of the lightest cars here. Uh, <laughs> Rev the crap out of the motorbike engine. We have the highest revving engine, probably, down here. Yeah. Hillman Imp versus Land Rover and two very old plastic Bentleys. Uh, that's always going to go well. I'm going to sneak, sneaky, sneaky Hillman. Use the acceleration! Uh, <laughs> got two of them. The Land Rover, I believe, has been really tried to convert it. Don't ask. I'm not sure about it either, but that's what it's gone for. Uh, whether it'll work or not, don't know. Uh, but it is in the fight. We can have a big chuck up the inside. We've been pushed around enough. I think, oh, that deep water, though. Deep water is bad. We've got a Triumph. A Tron Triumph is having a look to the outside. Oh, I don't want to go in the water because I'm in Hillman and it's got no speed through there compared to the Land Rover or the Bentleys. Right, so this circuit, I think this circuit, if it wasn't for the water, we could be quite quick, but the water just kind of kills it, which is too small and too light, and that's understandable. Unfortunately, there's just not much I can do about that, really. Um... Hopefully it'll come good in later circuits and everything, but for this particular one, it's not quite working. I mean, we're still kind of there as we head on to the bridge. Oh, Triumph got into a battle and then lost the back end. We tried to follow. We tried to find that gap that was left to the inside. We kind of did, but here we go. The Bentley might have a look at turn one. You know what? Go for it. Uh, I'm just going to back it off sensibly through there, and we will come back out the other side and keep hold of our fifth position. Uh, now, the Triumph is going to fight with the Land Rover. We can, get, uh, if we can get through the water section cleanly. That's the thing we've got to worry about. The Triumph's having a massive crash on its own. I'm having a big spin myself. This was more That was more me trying to avoid the water and avoid the spinning Triumph. We're back up to third place now from all of that. Uh, we all try and sneak as far away from the water as we can because the, uh, the, the water just kills the momentum. Even in the Bentleys, it's going to hurt them a bit. It's just it hurts the, tri uh, the hurts the Hillman an awful, awful lot more. Now, I'm really hoping... Yeah, okay, so we didn't have a Bentley to the outside, so I could take the line that I wanted to. Uh, it's had a go. It's not going to stick, though, because we will just come back past through there. We're back up to third. We're trying to chase down another big Bentley in second. The leader's gone. The MGB is having a, a wonderful time of it on its own, well out of all of the trouble. <laughs> I don't think I can match it for pace anyway, but in the fight, certainly can't. Oh no. Turned in too soon. It's, uh, it's quite responsive, is this vehicle. Um, it's a bit weird to, to drive. I'm not, I'm not the most fond of the handling. I feel like it's potentially to be quite quick, but it's also quite twitchy. Oh, I actually want to be up on the wall. I want to just avoid the water. I don't actually want to ride around on the wall. I uh, <laughs> just wanted to get it as far away from the water as I can, because I don't. I know this car just can't deal with it. It's, it's to be expected. It can't deal with that water. That's understandable and everything. Uh, we know what we've got to do up this next section. Just stick out wide, avoid the water. The car, everyone has mostly figured this out. You've got to be careful with that whole avoiding the water because you don't want to miss the checkpoint. It's easily done that. 
Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Did a couple of goes at turning in through there, because the back end had a mind of its own. We're quite evenly matched with the 8-litre ahead of us. Probably not still got the 8-litre, but... We are quite evenly matched. Like, it pulls away on the straights. We reel it back in, in the corners and in a couple of other places. But we're much better under brakes. Uh, I mean, that, that was bad, because the, we ended up doing it turn one. Uh, I don't know whether I'll fourth out of that corner. Maybe third would work. Um, but, yeah, who knows. Now, let's try and not ping the wall, but let's try and avoid the water. Really difficult to get that change of direction. Oh, right. That, that's killed it. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I turned a bit too much. We didn't stay up high enough. The car ahead has gone through a lot of the water there, but it's well clear of me. Yeah, they did a really good job, actually, of staying out wide and just keeping away from the trouble, and I didn't do a good enough job that time around. It's kind of like a... a I slightly missed where I wanted to be, and then I kind of committed to just diving through the water and hope. I don't know why I hoped that anything could be different. We can reel in so much through these final couple of corners. Gives me hope for some other tracks, possibly. We shall have to wait and see. I should call up the leader a little bit. We're curious about fastest lap on this one. We had a good final. I'm surprised we had a good final lap. The Bentley must have had a storming final lap up there. It did. 107 107.436. 107.434. Oh, what a 7833 for the uh, four and a half litre. So we were all quicker than that MGB, but the MG got away at the front, stayed out of the trouble, stayed clear. In fact, the Defender was the quickest of all of us. Oh, no, it wasn't. Ignore me. Sorry, but it was also competitive in there in terms of that time. I thought that was 1070. Hmm. Okay. It's a good start for the twitchy, twitchy Hillman. So, we head next to the South Island Circuit, and we have had some connection issues. It's taken us about 20 minutes to get this next race loaded. I don't know how well it's going to last, but we're going to try and see what happens. It may have problems. We start on pole. I don't know what this track is going to be like for my car, if I'm honest. Um, I fear it might not... I, I fear I might get the car get a bit too twitchy for this sort of, uh, for this sort of a layout, but... Yeah, I genuinely don't know. We know we're not going to be the fastest off the line. Where my car is strong is the handling side of things. Um, Jesus, there's a lot of very powerful cars. Uh, yeah, we have less than 200 horsepower in this thing. We have about 120 torque, so it's not going to be very quick down the straight. But it is light and it has rally tyres, which, I mean, it's, it's pretty good for the old the old handling side of things. Oh, we're out of ghosty ghosty mode. I was enjoying ghosty ghosty mode. So we can just tear our way past everything in these corners. Uh, I the, the turning on this is so vicious. You just go to a corner and the front end does what the front end... Well, the front end does not what I'm expecting it to. I'm expecting it to struggle, but the front end just gets turned in. Unfortunately, we are just going to get nudged by... Oh, well, I think it's by everything on the inside there. And that is the downside that I have with this. Is that it is small, it is light and it is going to get in trouble with uh, much bigger machinery here. Uh, we've got great speed through this section up against a Healy Sprite. Oh, we're going to get dive bombs. Uh, it's, got, it's just it's so hectic around here. The, the worst bit about all of this is my car is quick here. Uh, I think, lap time-wise, I think my car is actually going to set a really, really quick one. It's whether I can be left alone to do lap time, whether I can be left alone to, to make my own lap speed for long enough, that might be uh, the difficult part for the for the Hillman. Now it's always going to be worse on the first lap of course, if the race goes on, as the, as the field spreads out, we should be able to find ourselves in better positions. Uh, but yeah, for the opening lap it could be a little sketchy. Now the MGB is going to be tearing its way down this straight. Uh, can I be flat through here do you reckon? Uh, yes, we can be uh, through all of that, and we can have a dive up the inside here, and we will have the grip to pull that one off. And now we might not quite have the acceleration, that's okay, because I know that uh, the Bentley is not going to be able to hold much speed through here. We should be able to round it up and get the pass completed. The Land Rover's doing good in third, actually, and I'm impressed with this Hillman with the speed of this thing. It's a little bit on edge, <laughs> driving-wise. It's a little bit 
twitchier than I would I did like, but it has got very, very good pace in the car. The Bentley's going to come back past again, that's fine. Uh, we're going to chuck the Hillman up the inside through here and say thank you very much for that one, and we will be out of the way by the time we get to this next very, very tight corner. Now, these corners are not quite so good for me, perhaps. Uh, I want fast corners, I want long corners, because that's where we have the biggest advantage. Stop-start corners, we have a bit of an advantage, but the bigger, heavier vehicles don't have as many problems with them as uh, as they do with like these kind of corners. This is where I can just carry my momentum, hopefully. That's the plan, at least, here. Sorry, chicken. <laughs> You're in the track. i got to go where i got to go with this car. Um, please tell me it doesn't. I don't want it to start raiding, because I don't need anything that makes my vehicle more uncooperative, because it's just on the limit of being difficult to drive. You can see through there the back end really wanted to step out. It is absolutely on, it's on the limit of what I can push with, basically. I've talked about this a few times before with my with my vehicle builds and so on. I do not like cars that oversteer, okay? It just doesn't suit the way that I drive. And while that is actually odd to a lot of people, um, I prefer understeering cars. It's just the way that I extract speed from a vehicle and a vehicle that I'm comfortable driving is one that the back end is stuck on the road and the trade-off is that the front end will be a bit understeery. It's just how I am. It's how I am with real vehicles, our racial remote control cars, and I can't stand an oversteery one. It's just, as I said, it's just how I am. Um, and this thing is not like that. This thing, the back end is, I mean, you can see it moving around. It's a bit, I say it's more difficult. When you're driving the car, it's different to how you are seeing this on a screen. Uh, but the back end is teetering on the edge of letting go in a number of places. It's not fully letting go <laughs> around here and I will be the first to say that this thing is bloody fast. There is no doubt about it. This is a very, very quick vehicle. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the setup is to my liking, shall we say. It's not, I'm not comfortable really with the car. We've pulled a little bit of a gap. We're only talking about a second here over that Bentley. We're a couple of seconds clear of the Land Rover. The MG's there, but not going to be challenging us unless we do something silly on this final lap. Yeah, if I chuck this car in here with sort of full lock, it's again, it's just moving across the road. Uh, we will get it slowed down for the next one. Now, I also am aware that watching this, a lot of people would be very happy with the way this car drives. This is what a lot of people would want from their vehicles, but yeah, not for me. However, it is working, so we shall make the most of it when we can here. Uh, we will tear up towards the hairpin, and again, we can just keep this margin. And we're well out of range of there being any thoughts of dive bombs, etc. You know, we're not going to have any problems with that. Uh, we will go down to second for the exit. The Bentley just can't get it around the hairpin. The MG has moved up to third. That's something. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to get caught a little bit at the start of this lap, just because it's all a lot of long straights. It then tightens up to this sort of twisty section. This is where we can hopefully make a little bit of a margin. I got that line all wrong and had to kind of check up a bit, but well, again, jump on the brakes for the hairpin. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter if we're on ride, we've got rally tyres on this. Uh, we've got the acceleration. We are, we've not got the fastest car here by any stretch of the imagination for acceleration, but it's still pretty good. You know, when it's about 1,700 pounds and 200 horsepower, it shifts. <laughs> I do like I like this corner here. It just scares the crap out of me every time I feel at like the back end. One one time the back end is going to let go if I did enough laps around here. Thankfully, it hasn't on any of the laps that we've been racing here. We've extended the margin out to over two seconds as we come up towards the finish line. Victory goes the way of the Hillman Imp. It is, as I said, <laughs> a bit un, a bit different for me driving wise. The MG had some speed. I mean, it's only a couple of tenths we're talking. Dude. Very very close in all of that. Okay, it was a good race, a good race for me, held on, we fought well. Uh, on to the next one. We head next off-road, the Hilltop Scramble, where, I mean, I'm hoping we might be okay again. I feel like this thing has been surprised, it's surprised me, it's worked in places I didn't think it necessarily would. Uh, maybe it can again, maybe, just, just maybe. Uh, likely to be twitchy. We might struggle with power up the hills and for the straights. There is the ever scary hairpin with a big uh, 
drop on the outside if you get things wrong. So let's not get things wrong, I think, is the best way to, to sum this up. Uh, we've got a good spot on the grid. I mean, we're all-wheel drive. It's not this, The grid spot on this track isn't as important. I'd say it isn't as important, but um, we'll get fired off into this kind of first corner that's going to be flat out for everybody, and then we have a long straight towards a hairpin. So, oh god, bumps, 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 down here. Ooh, little Hillman, sort yourself out. We've got Talbot is going to go flying uh, past. There is a very sideways triumph. So I suspect there's going to be some cars here that are going to be all-wheel drive and standard tyres. Uh, they will be the power machines. Um, the Bentleys may be rally tyres, they're just big and heavy. Uh, but I know they can get rally tyres in B-Class. I was tempted to bring mine, but decided not to. Because uh, people shout at me when I turn up with my Bentley. <laughs> Very quick, the four and a half litre. All wheel drive, four and a half. Well, it's not, it, it's technically not a four and a half litre anymore. My one um, is all wheel drive rally tyres at a 3.2 straight six from a BMW, I think. Uh, yeah, that's very, very quick in, in B class. This hill in though, I am, as I said, it's, it's impressive. The hill, we are climbing currently, not so great. I mean, we don't have much power, but of course, we don't have much weight to lug up the hill. That is the plus point for us. Uh, there is no. Uh, there's almost half a chance getting to the inside at that uh, final corner. We'll sneak it up the inside through turn one as well. We've just got the speed with this. Because the helmet does have a wide body kit, which I have on the car. That gives it some bigger tyres. They're not amazingly big on this, but they're bigger than a lot of classic cars would get, which is something, that's for sure. Uh, we are to the lead of the race. Now, the Triumph I saw took second place, so we get a big... It's kind of getting these big oversteery twitches mid-corner. I accidentally set this to four laps instead of five, but never mind. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on. Get slowed down. I'm going to bump across there. Where is that? Okay, so the Triumph is out wide. So I think the important bit for me as far as the climb goes is that while, yes, my car doesn't have crazy power, it's the corner before the climb I can carry momentum where I'm not sure many other cars can carry something not the same kind of momentum that we can. I've got to be a little wary about that Triumph. It's, yeah, it's got a lot of top end, so it's down towards the hairpin where I've got to be careful, but can't maintain its speed through that final corner because it just doesn't have the grip. I'm not sure I 100% trust my car either, but I kind of... I don't trust it, but we've got to go for it anyway. Uh, I've got to believe that it's going to stick to the road uh, and, and hope that it, that it does, even though I don't fully be actually fully trust that it's going to every time. Uh, so far, it hasn't let me down. Oh, okay. I'm, when I was talking about the, the falling off at the, the hairpin at turn one, I forgot. So a, a while ago, we did a, one of our own custom rally tournaments around there in the snow. And, of course, in free run, there isn't the walls there on the outside. I forgot that when you load it up as a race, there actually is a wall. Oh, there's that oversteer moment. That's the sort of stuff that I was worried about with the car. We've got away with it. It could have been a lot worse. It bounced it sideways. It skated through the checkpoint, but it caught it with the rear bumper. It just caught it enough that, uh, that it would work. We've got one more time around after this. Uh, we are staying clear. It's going to be a moment where this is going to let go. I can just sense. I mean, we can't go too easy here. But we have got a little bit of a lead, which is nice. But we've got more of a lead here than we have had elsewhere. We can't go too easy with this car. Otherwise, we will get past. And also, if you end up trying to just take it a little bit carefully, it's really easy to throw your rhythm off. And then you make really dumb mistakes from trying to not push as hard. I, yeah, I'm terrible for that, just get, getting out of a rhythm, so that's why I tend not to really let up. Uh, well, even if we are also risking having an accident just because the car is twitching. There's a great battle going on for second, and that's really not helping the Triumph. The Triumph doesn't really need that or want that fight for second if it's going to stand a chance of chasing down my vehicle. Uh, in fact, it looks like it has a lot. I don't know what's in fourth. I think it, is it a Corsa? No. No, I'm not sure what's in for. Uh, there is a course for about, again, another very, very strong B-class car. It can be a strong B-class car. Uh, just trying to have a look. I can't see, though, what's what's back there in, in fourth. Uh, we are going to head around, though, this final corner, and it has been a strong performance once again from the Hillman here. It crosses the line. It takes a victory. Whew. Lap time-wise. I mean, they weren't that far back. They weren't that far away. Oh, it's a Sunbeam, of course, it's up in third. Yeah, there weren't that weren't crazy big differences in terms of lap time. In fact, the Defender is the quickest, but couldn't get through the traffic. 
but the Hillman takes another victory. We head next to the Westwick Festival Circuit. This is the little uh, track that loops around by the festival. It is pouring with rain here. <laughs> We're continuing to have connection issues. Uh, basically, some people may be in the game, some people may not. It's changing each and every time. Uh, Forza is beat. Forza. Yeah, unfortunately, we film these on a Thursday evening, which is if there's an update or change of season or anything goes on, it goes on often on a Thursday, and the server's uh, often iffiest on a Thursday. It just happens to be... We film stuff on games on Thursdays long before Horizon. It just happens to be that's the day that's been chosen for this sort of stuff. But regardless, um, yeah, there are apparently problems tonight. Normally it's okay. We have had a few sessions that have been iffy, but yes, tonight it's deciding it doesn't want to play ball. Uh, this track, I mean, I'm not sure we're going to enjoy this one. Long, long straights for the cars. Yes, I can outturn everything at this corner here. Oh, no, I can't, though, because the back end's let go. I uh, can outturn some stuff, sure, but we're just going to get slaughtered down the straights, I suspect. Well, that's okay. My vehicle is specialised. For, for, you know, it's good at what it does. It's specialised in a manner. That's okay. It just it's going to suck at this kind of... Oh, this kind of stuff. Might be able to... Sorry, Jag. I actually did not want to end up out that wide. I was just fighting with my comparable lack of grip here. Comparative lack of grip. Um, it just moves around a lot in the rear of the car. And that's probably to do with the rear engine. I've got it on rally suspension, and I feel like if I could tune... I feel like if you could tune the suspension on this, you'd probably get it. You could probably tune out some of the weirdness from the car. Uh, but I don't know what I'm doing with it, so I haven't. And yeah, maybe rally suspension for tarmac stuff with it being untuned. It's very soft, very springy, and that's probably not helping the back end that wants to do its own thing, really. Uh, sometimes the back end wants to overtake the front. That seems to be the real problem with this car. Uh, can I cut underneath? Oh, the Talbot knew what I was trying to do. There was kind of a gap. Uh, we, we kind of went underneath and the Talbot kind of came down for its line. And yeah, there's a little bit of a not quite enough room for everything. Uh, even for little cars sometimes. I, I fear even if I catch these Bentleys, I can't do a damn thing about them. Like, we could catch it. We could maybe get to the inside through here if I don't oversteer it and get myself in trouble. But then what am I going to do on the exit? The Bentley gets a big twitch, a big run across the grass. What am I going to do down here? I can't outrun it. I guess you can sit in the slipstream and then try and get it at the final corner. That's the way That's the way it's going to have to go. The MG looks very quick around this track. That looks out of reach for me. Uh, Oh, the four and a half litres had trouble. Run wide, he's going to lose a place. Uh, I say, I mean, I say the MG looks quick. It does look quick, and then we get to the corners, and then we also make our lap time up here. Uh, we are to the inside now. If we can hold here, Max just can't do anything on that wider line. It's got no grip to do anything out there. Uh, we can hopefully run into this corner, get ourselves clear. Indeed we have, and we are out the other side, and provided we don't make a mess at the end of the straight, we should be okay. The Bentleys are busy squabbling with each other. It's all good. It's all fine by me. Uh, yeah, this is actually better than I thought it was going to do around here. Good under brakes. Get the car turned through here. It's going to slide out towards the wall a little bit as I'm being eager with the throttle. Ah, oh, the lightning storm is coming to an end. We're enjoying the spectacular weather effect. They're all chasing each other across the road, yeah. That's still one more lap to go. It's going to go wrong at some point for them. <laughs> Good news is I think I'm far enough away that it's not going to be me involved with it. The poor Talbot's going to suffer the uh, fate of being stuck with two fighting barges. Uh, oh, don't get oversteer through there. I still don't know whether I'm on fourth or third. I, don't, I think my runoff there has been really bad. Bentley is going to actually get past us here if we can hold it. Big slides from the 8 litre. So we're going to have to do something at this final corner. The Bentley goes super defensive. It won't matter here necessarily. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, I say it doesn't matter. The Bentley just wanders wide. It's always likely to understeer. That's annoying. Uh, we have the second quickest car. Just a one. I mean, I shouldn't have put myself in that situation. We should have been better coming down, better in front of the actual festival building. That's what put me in trouble in the first place. Yeah. 
And I guess we should have expected maybe the Bentley to wander away. Just the angle it was at, I thought it was slowing down a lot more for the inside so I could sweep around that outside line. It didn't quite work. Ah, well. At the end of the day, yeah. The Hillman still worked fairly well at that track. For our final race with these British or United Kingdom machines, we have come to the Needle Descent. Seeing as we're on Fortune Island, might as well make most of this. I suspect the Hillman is going to be very fast. For 50%. The very twiddly, nasty 50%. And then after that, I'm a bit worried. If we start third, but if we get buried in the pack going down the hill, if we can't make the most of our superior grip that we seem to have here, we are going to be in trouble because it's a very fast end section. The Triumph, the MG, are, you know, like people. I don't know the Sunbeam's grip. I don't think we've had a full out and out handling battle with that car yet, by virtue of the disconnections and everything. Oh, we took it that through there, and the back end is just not stuck. It's just not. Not stuck to the road. Okay, let's see what we can do here. So we've not fallen too far back from the Triumph or the Bentley, that's good. We know we are very, very good handling, so we should pass them on the way down. It's what happens with the, uh, the Talbot that is, I say, a bit of a concern. We can get past the Triumph. I mean, a little bit, says a little bit rude, we might have to be at times here. It's difficult to pass on this needle descent. We've seen it before when we've run tournaments around this course. It's not always so easy to overtake. If you spot a gap, you're going to just kind of have to go for it, really. Uh, the Bentley is holding everyone up a little bit. It's not so much that, like, I'm just taking slightly different lines because I'm looking for a way past. This is what we didn't need. This is bad news. It's bad news for me. It's bad news for the Talbot. Great news for the Bentley. Because, uh, at the end of the day, that thing is probably faster than us down the straight. Although it does have its aero limitations, let's not forget. The big Bentleys do have that aero wall that they hit. Uh, I, can't, I just can't get past the sunbeam at the moment. Because now the line that I want to take, I can't take. Because that's in the way. And then we can't focus on the Bentley. Oh... And he's got some pace here, because it's actually pulled away from the Talbot, although it's immediately gone and run wide through the next corner. Uh, I don't know out of me and the Sunbeam who has a better top end if it comes down to a drag race between us two. But yeah, we've come out of the twisty section now, and it's bad news for us. What I feared might happen pretty much has. Uh, we've been stuck in traffic the whole way round. Here goes the Talbot now. It's got more straight line speed than I do. What's my, my best bet for winning this? Well, the only bet for winning this is that everyone has a crash at the festival corner and we can come soaring past or the Bentley hits an aero wall, the Talbot hits an aero wall. Talbot's running Forza Aero by the looks of it, which I am not, so... Maybe pure ultra top end speed we have a small advantage. Like aerodynamics speed, maybe we have a small advantage here. Bentley's cut underneath a great move from the Bentley. Oh, it caught the nose of the Sunbeam and I was committed and couldn't do anything to avoid it. Oh, it just as it came past, the uh, Sunbeam... Well, the Sunbeam caught the back of it. Not quite sure. There was a, just a side of this tangle and I had to lift. Ah, oh, that's annoying. That is annoying. It's, it was a fun race. I, I say it's annoying. It's annoying because I know I had a very quick car for that one. Pretty much what I feared happened. Um, that being said, it was a great race. Well done to the Bentley. It did a good job to hold us off down that hill. Because both the Sunbeam and the Imp were very quick down there. So... Yeah, <laughs> that was a good fun battle. That was a good fun race. Actually, these cars were really, really enjoyable. Some Forza connection issues along the way, absolutely. But uh, yeah, that was good. And I'm, I'm pleased with my car. It worked better than I, than I thought it was going to. It's difficult to drive. I'm not sure I'd always want to race it. I feel like it, it's quick up until... And, you know, over a course of multiple races, it's quick. But there's going to be one time where you have a dumb crash with it. Uh, until I get used to that sort of driving style, I guess. But... Yeah, the Sunbeam was pretty good. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. If you would like to sign up to take part in the next one of these, you can via our Discord. There'll be a link to that in the description. Find the Versus the Community sign-up section, and you can register to take part in there. That, though, is going to be it from me. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.